Our first guest this morning has some great insight on the discipline dilemma. She's a nationally acclaimed author and has written more than a dozen books on parenting and discipline. And we are truly pleased to welcome author Jane Nelson. Jane, I got to tell you, as I was talking to some of those women, I fall in the same thing. Your kids do something, they, you know, you say, I told you not to eat chocolate pudding on the white upholstered chair, and the discipline automatically becomes a punishment. Is that the first mistake that parents make? I believe so. Thinking that discipline and punishment are synonymous, and I don't believe they are. I think that uh, punishment is designed to make children pay for what they've done. And as the last mother in that little vignette said, that really positive discipline is designed to help children learn from their mistakes and to learn more cooperative behavior. Now, you know you're big on examples, Jane. What would be an example to kind of illustrate this point that discipline does not necessarily I mean punishment? Well, for example, suppose your child loses their baseball mitt. What do most parents do? They start with the lecture. <laughs> How many times have I told you to be more responsible? If you take care of it, this wouldn't happen. I can't believe you would do this. And I'll tell you something. I'm not going to buy you another one. And then it's sort of part of what I call the bail them out, uh, the ball them out, and then bail them out syndrome because uh -huh. 10 minutes later they're in the car driving to get a new mitt. <laughs> the mother's still going with the mouth. Well, this is the last time I'll buy you one. I'm not going to do this again. If you can't learn to be more responsible. And what does the child learn? that I don't ha all I have to do is turn tune out the lectures because they do if you look at their eyes they're just not listening <laughs> and then they because they know their parents will take care of it what positive discipline would look like is first empathize with them gee that must feel so bad that you lost it you might have to miss the game I'm so sorry and when you're calmed down we'll talk about focusing on solutions that's that's when we want th teaching children these valuable life skills what could you do to earn more money to buy another one I'll support you and I'll help you, but I won't do it for you. So looking for the answers, looking for the solution. Exactly. And you know, when we say no punishment, often people think, well, does that mean you're going to be permissive? And that's not healthy for children. So no, it's not being permissive. Another common parenting mistake you say is that parents tend to rescue the child. What do you mean by that? Well, we don't want to let children have their feelings. We don't want them to be upset. We don't want to be hurt them. And yet with our lectures, we often upset them and hurt them. But uh, for example, the, the example, when children are having a temper tantrum because they want a toy, what do most parents do? They first try and talk them out of it, but then they eventually give in so that their poor little darling won't be upset. And when we do that, children don't learn that they can develop their disappointment muscles, that they can survive the ups and downs of life, and that they can feel more capable because they have done that. So in that example, what I would suggest to parents do is that they just kindly and firmly take the child out, sit in the car in a few minutes, and say, let me know when you're ready to try again. Because children of that age learn more from action than from words. You talk about many mistakes that parents make, and I, I'm like guilty on every one of your accounts. For example, a punitive timeout. Is that a mistake that parents shouldn't be giving timeouts like that? Absolutely. And see, I think that the most popular discipline methods today are punishment, whether it's lectures or spanking or withdrawal of privileges or timeout. And timeout usually looks like this. You go to your room and you think about what you did, which is the silliest thing we can say because what are children thinking about? Not what they did. They're not sitting in there thinking, oh, this is so helpful. I'm so glad that my parents have sent me in here because I'm going to learn to be. No, they're thinking about either how to not get caught next time, how to get even, or <laughs> even worse, they might be thinking I'm a bad person. And so what I suggest is that it's really a good idea for children to learn to calm down until they can engage. You know, they, they go into that fight or flight response. We all do when we're upset. And so we need a cooling off period until we feel better. We can engage the rational brain again. So I suggest that parents get their children to create a positive time area, time out that where they, something that might have cushions, books, soft music, and they can choose, would it help you to go to your feel good place? Let them name it something else, like, like space, or my granddaughter named her Sparkle. Would it help you to go to Sparkle for a while? And if they say no, the parent can say, would you like me to go with you? Why not? They probably need it just as much. Because see, punishment based is based on the idea that in order to make children do better, first we have to make them feel worse. Really a silly idea. Because the truth is, is that children do better when they feel better. Now you might want to follow up with going through some what happened, what do you think caused it to happen, how do you feel about it, what ideas do you have to solve the problem. So when, I, when we send our kids to the naughty mat or the, you know, the uh, naughty step, that is, that is not only the wrong thing to do, that's the wrong thing to call it, isn't it? Absolutely, because it's teaching children doubt and shame. Yeah. But we're still talking about a step back from the situation and giving children time to calm down. Yes, but first of all, I say if they're not old enough to help create it, they're not old enough to use it because people who use 
you know, uh, time, pos negative time out with young children don't understand developmental process and that children at that age can't really understand cause and effect. And if they're not old enough to choose it, notice I said, would it help you to go? Because knowing that this is a life skill, to learn to calm down and take time out, wouldn't that be a beautiful life skill for children to learn? It really would. It really would. Interesting insight there, Jane. Your, your next parenting mistake that you suggest, which I think a lot of parents could relate to, is lectures and threats. Oh, yes. In fact, we lecture, 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 and we often, children learn that we don't mean what we say and we don't follow through and do what we say we're going to do. And one of my favorite examples of that is a lot of parents have problems with kids who fight in the backseat of the car. And what they do is they lecture. Now, this is dangerous. You kids quit fighting. If you don't quit fighting, we're not going to, you know, they lecture, lecture, threaten, 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 and they never follow through. And so what I suggest is that you let your kids know in advance, before you even get in the car, if you guys fight, I will just pull over to the side of the road, and I will read a book, and you can let me know when you're ready. And then you say, now, what is your understanding of what I'm going to do? And they read, pay, pay back to you, both of them, you're going to pull over. And when will I know you're ready to start again? They both have to say, when we both tell you we're ready. And then you do it. The minute they start fighting, you just pull over, you start to read a book, you do not say a word. That's a key thing. Because pretty soon, you know, when you argue, somebody said, I argue with my children. They don't argue unless they've got somebody to argue with. And when you argue with your children, they're smarter than you are. They can out-argue you. They win every time. <laughs> so if you just read your book and have a good book, hope they'll fight so that you can stop and read your book. And pretty soon they're going to get bored. They're going to say, come on, let's go. And, and even if they try and say, talk uh, you out of it, just sit and listen. Because they know what you said. You don't give warnings. That's assuming they're stupid. They didn't hear what you said. And you had them repeat it back so you know. Pretty soon they'll say, Okay, we're ready. And then you say, thank you. I really appreciate your cooperation. And if nothing else, be reading the car manual. Anything, just to have an excuse to read something to, to let them know. <laughs> follow through with it, yeah, like that's you it. said. Follow to make through. Sure. To mean what you say and say what you mean is just so important because kids trust that. And I, hundreds of parents have tried this, and they say it usually takes three times. And then the kids know if you say it, you mean it. And if you mean it, you're going to follow through. Such great insight, Jane. Thank you so much for sharing those thoughts with us. And you have, you've written... Many books, many, 18. many books, 18, 18 books, 18. and you have a website where parents can go for more information. It's very easy, positivediscipline.com. And there's the book right there. That, it's been in print how many years now? 25 years. This is the 25-year anniversary edition. Wow. Tried and true. Thanks for the great ideas. I'm, I'm changing the naughty stare three. Please, okay? please. We're so calling it Sparkle now. <laughs> it's the Sparkle section. You're going to be with us Saturday at the Mothering Conference. I am. I am. What are you going to be speaking on? Well, I am going to be doing practical application where parents are going to bring their problems and I'm going to give them lots of tools. That's what I love to do. If I say don't use punishment, they're not going to give that up until they know what else to do. Right. So we give them a lot of tools of what to do. To register for the conference, go to SuccessfulMothering.org. You can join us for the whole day or just part day. It's going to be a great event with more than 40 workshops you can attend to become a better parent and a better mother. We'll be out there too and be watching for you. Thanks so much for stopping in, Jane. Thank My you. My pleasure. Thank you.